So originally, this video is going to be something totally different. I had the idea of taking a bunch of Terraria lore, both modded and vanilla, and combining them to make one cohesive story. Sound boring? Well the catch was that I was going to be taking absolutely nothing seriously and make a joke out of everything. For example, the Moon Warden Ragnarok? They're golf buddies. The infection from Modern Redemption? Why, it's none other than Yaram's foot fungus. How many times can I zoom in on Yaram's feet before it becomes uncomfortable? As fun as it would have been to piss everyone off, I couldn't really find a way to make the video entertaining. Not saying I won't do it in the future, but as of now it's on hold. Anyway, let's talk about capitalism. The Traveling Merchant is an NPC that will come to your town from time to time to sell rare and exotic goods. As long as you have two other NPCs moved in, and there's not an event going on like the Goblin Army or the Martian Madness, he has a 22% chance to arrive every day between the break of dawn and noon. He'll make his departure at 6 in the evening if he is off screen, meaning that if you stand right next to him, he can never leave. He'll defend himself with a revolver, or a pulse bow if the world is hard mode, if he's killed, he'll drop the peddler's hat, so now you too can look all lavish and trustworthy. With that basic info out of the way, let's get into how the traveling merchant, I'll just call him Trav's, uh, how Trav's stock works. When the merchant arrives, he can have anywhere from 4 to 10 items on him, and 11 if the world is in expert or master mode. The amount of items he has on him are also affected by the luck stat. Anyway, Travs can sell a variety of items ranging from tiles to weapons to accessories to alcohol, but every item does not have an equal chance to be sold. Instead, they can be roughly grouped into categories based on their overall chance you have of finding them. The first items are in the common category. This is mostly reserved for tiles such as team colored blocks, the dynasty set, and some decorations like animal skins and fancy dishes. These tend to be items that most players dread seeing, but builders will be overjoyed to use one of the best tiles in the game. Along with these, the merchant can also sell some informational accessories, if you're into that stuff. Which I am. I think I have a problem. The DPS meter is a handy tool that lets you know how much damage you're putting out, the stopwatch can tell you your speed at which you're moving, and the life form analyzer can inform you of rare creatures nearby for you to brutally slaughter. Finally, he can sell some food items and alcohol that can give you an edge in battle. They're cheap enough, so why not pick some up? There are also the slightly less common Ultra Bright Torch and the Katana, along with a whole bunch of building accessories whose purpose I've yet to figure out. These items are nice and all, but probably are what most players are looking for. The next category though might just get your attention. The next items are rarer than the other ones listed before, but are much more interesting. First off, there's a whole ton of vanity in this category. You've got... Pretty Pink Set, Fake Unicorn Horn, Art Hairpin, Star Hairpin, Fedora, Panda Ears, Devil Horn, Steven Horn, Star Princess Set, Chef Set, Gamer Set, Fez, Gee, Hunter Cloak, Winter Cape, Crimson Cape, Mysterious Cape, and Diamond Ring. Ugh. Where was I? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, there's a ton of vanity here. There are even more decorational items available, such as many paintings, most of which are Chris's exclusive, and the Ammo Box, a pretty good tool for ranged players since it decreases ammo consumption. Speaking of ranged builds, Travis can also sell the Revolver, a pretty strong gun that can stay relevant all the way up until getting the standard handgun and its upgrade. The Pulse Bow is another underused weapon that is sold only after beating Plantera. It shoots a fast moving laser bolt that can bounce and pierce multiple targets, making it great against groups of enemies or in confined spaces. The Code 1 and Code 2 are yo-yos that you can get after beating the Eye of Cthulhu and the Mechanical Boss respectively, and they're a pretty good option for melee users who want to keep their distance, especially the Code 2, since that has the benefit of having infinite duration. You could also pair these yo-yos with some counterweights such as the yellow and black varieties. Oh, and don't let me forget the best weapon in the game, the Water Gun. Trust me, this is very important. Magic users also have a good selection of items to choose from, such as the Magic Hat and the Gypsy Robe, which improves magic damage and mana capacity. There's also the Celestial Magnet, which increases the range at which you can pick up precious mana restoring stars, and can be combined with other items to make some powerful accessories. This final weapon here isn't lethal against zombies, demons, and worms, but is very effective against fish, the Sitting Duck's Fishing Pole. This is straight up one of the best fishing rods in the entire game, so it's well worth getting your hands on. 
And now we get to the part of the video that I bet most of you were looking forward to, the pets. Relogic knew what they were doing when they made the 1.4 update and added a ridiculous 32 pets. Yeah, I didn't know there were that many either. Anyway, the traveling merchant offers the following. Bedazzled Nectar, which summons a little butterfly. The exotic chew toy gives you a fennec fox whose buff tooltip hurts me on multiple levels. The bamboo leaf gives you a baby red panda, which I know is a fan favorite, and the birdie rattle lets you adopt a little harpy. The celestial wand lets you cosplay as the worst Smash Bros character. And finally, there's the good old classic companion cube, expensive as ever. In fact, all of these pet items are very expensive, most of them sitting at one platinum coin. It does stink that they cost so much, but hey, that's how capitalism works. You want to know what else is capitalism? So we've gone over most of the wares trads can sell, from the boring to the heartwarming to the... Now all that's left are the rarest and most valuable items. The best of the best. You won't be seeing these too often, but when you do, it'll be an experience you won't forget. Speaking of forgetting, the Super Star Shooter is first, and funnily enough, is no longer sold by the traveling merchant. That got changed in 1.4.1. For you mobile players though, the Star Shooter is an upgrade to the Star Cannon, and while it might not do that much more damage, it fires a secondary projectile, much like that of the Influx Waver, and can lay waste to anything in your path. Given you have the ammunition, of course. Now back to things that the merchant can actually sell. The Gatligator is a hard mode, rapid fire, spray and pray machine gun. It isn't the most accurate thing, having a pretty wide spread which hinders its effectiveness at long ranges, but pair these things up with special kinds of bullets and the results will be devastating. Or just be boring and use chlorified bullets, that works too I guess. Next up is the Sergeant United Shield, and this item just barely avoids getting smacked with a healthy dose of copyright. This shield can be thrown like a boomerang and will seek out foes before returning to the player. It also grants the player the ability to block attacks. Right clicking will put up the shield and doing so with perfect timing will perform a parry, dealing some damage to the attacker and boosting the power of your own attacks by 400% for some time. That should be all the weapons. I don't think I'm missing anything. Oh. The Zappinator. The Grey Zappinator is a pre hard mode magic gun and the orange one is the hard mode variant. When they hit an enemy, they can do some weird and random things, ranging from changing the projectile's path to doing some insane damage. This weapon is a gambler's dream. Are you not into all this violence and just want to look nice? Well, Travis has you covered there. The kimono is a very nice looking outfit and can really let you show off your luxurious status to the rest of the world. If you want to make everyone's eyes melt, arcane rune walls are for you. This magical wallpaper will change the glyphs they display after a short amount of time. Use a lot of them to make everyone hate you. The final item Traz can sell is the Angel Halo. I know everyone says that money is the root of all evil, and I can't imagine what you must have done to be the able to afford this. Come on, the clothes to... don't lie. You must be a good person. You've committed no atrocities. Zero. None. Now go back to your happy little home and eat some pie. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Traz is a dead cousin. The Skeleton Merchant will occasionally show up deep underground to sell you the garbage he's found. He can be pretty tricky to find at times, though the Hunter Potion and a Life Form Analyzer can help you find him. Ever wonder why random buddies just... appear underground? Well that means a Skeleton Merchant or some other friendly NPC is nearby. The Skeleton Merchant doesn't sell anything too interesting and really only serves the purpose to let the player restock on basic supplies and clear their inventory of junk in exchange for money. Note that most of the merchant's items are sold depending on the phase of the moon, so they might not always show up. He can sell lesser healing potions, or something called a strange brew, which is like a souped up mana potion with a tad bit of healing to go with it. It is very dark underground, so the merchant can help you light things up. He can sell torches, bone torches, glow sticks, splunker glow sticks, and a cute little magic lantern that will follow you around to reveal treasure. He also carries rope, bombs, Regular arrows and bone arrows. You can never have enough of those while exploring in the early game. Skeleton Merchant must also be a big fan of yo-yos because he not only sells two of them, he also can offer four different colored counterweights as well as a yo-yo glove, which will turn your dinky little toy into a force to be reckoned with. The final thing you can find in his stock is none other than the slap hand. Do I need to introduce this thing? 
That's right, it's a terrible melee weapon that pretty much does no damage. You have to be a fool to use this thing. Like, seriously, this thing is absolutely worthless. What a waste of space.